Let's learn in this video about the AKS egress or the outbound types. In AKS, we have different modes for managing the egress or the outbound types. We have the default mode, which is using a load balancer. So when we create an AKS cluster, if we don't specify any outbound type, it would be by default a load balancer. And then we have another mode. So the problem of load balancer would be the SNAT power exhaustion. So if you have that issue or that problem, then we can use another mode, which is the NAT gateway. And we have a third mode that would be using the Azure firewall with the UDR mode. And that is called the user defined mode or the UDR. In this lightboard session, I'll try to explain all these three outbound types. So let's start first with the load balancer. With the load balancer in my AKS cluster, that I will manage or I will control the egress traffic within the nodes, not the control plane. The control plane is managed by Azure, so I don't have access to it. So within the AKS nodes, we would have the OS, and then we would have one or multiple pods for my application. Those two components need to connect to resources outside of the cluster. The OS needs to get the OS updates, for example, and the pod needs, for example, to connect to some other resources to an external API, or the couplet here needs to connect to a container registry like MCR, like Azure Container Registry, like Docker Hub, in order to pull the images and so on. So that traffic that will go from inside the, the cluster, like from inside the pod or the uh, node itself, it will leave the cluster through by default a load balancer. That is the default mode. So within the AKS cluster, we would have another resource created that would be a load balancer. The traffic will leave using that load balancer and then it will leave by using a public IP address, an Azure IP address that will be used for the egress traffic. So this means in the service level, I will see the public IP address of the load balancer. I will not see the private IP address of the pod or the private IP of the node. And then that same load balancer could be used also for the ingress traffic into the cluster. So we would have here for the case of the ingress traffic, if you create a service of type load balancer, a public service, then that load balancer would go to provision, would have actually another public IP address will be used for the ingress traffic. So my users will connect to this IP address and then actually the arrow should be on the other direction right here. And from there, it will go to the load balancer and then it will reach my uh, pods inside the cluster. So that is the default mode within AKS. This mode is okay until we can have, in some cases, in some uh, scenarios, the problem of SNAT power exhaustion. Actually, the, the connections that will go from the pods or from the nodes will go through that public IP address. And here we will have a SNAT operation. And we would have a specific number of SNAT ports that will be available for each node. And if one node needs more than the pre-allocated SNAT ports that it have, then all the remaining connections will fail. So we would have here a simple solution for that issue, which is to provision another IP address or another public IP address for the egress. Each new IP will provision actually would have, would add a new SNAT port numbers that will be available to use by the AKS cluster. So we can provision one or multiple IPs. We can go up to 600 IP for the load balancer. But still with this, uh, uh, with this solution, each uh, node would have access to only specific or limited number, a predefined number of uh, per numbers. However, we have actually another solution that will replace the load balancer in this case, that is the second mode for the outbound type, which is using the NAT gateway. Let's see how that works. So we're still here with the NAT gateway. We still have our AKS nodes, still have that OS and our pods. And that load balancer will be replaced by an Azure NAT gateway. So the egress traffic now will go through a NAT gateway. That NAT gateway would have its own public IP addresses. And those IP addresses will be used for the egress traffic. What will change now with the NAT gateway when compared with the load balancer is that the IP address will provision will would have more SNAT ports uh, available. And those SNAT ports actually will be available for all the nodes themselves. If one node, 
needs to use more than or actually the node will not have any more a predefined a fixed number of SNAT ports that it can use. All the SNAT ports will be shared across all the nodes. So we might have one node that uses one single SNAT port and another node that uses the, all the rest of the SNAT ports. So that will reduce the problem of poor SNAT uh, exhaustion. And again with the NAT gateway as with the load balancer, we can have one or multiple egress IP addresses. Now what happens in this with this mode for the ingress traffic because before with the load balancer, the ingress will go through the load balancer. Now with the NAT gateway, if I create a service within a Kubernetes uh, of type load balancer, then what will happen is that in this case, we would have a new load balancer that will be created with a public IP address. So we would have a new load balancer that will be created in order to manage the ingress traffic and that public load balancer will have its own public IP that will be used for the ingress traffic in this case. Now let's see the third mode which is the UDR user defined routing. So with this mode, why at first we have this third mode, the root balancer and the NAT gateway would be just fine to use it within an AKS cluster, but they have an issue actually. For the enterprises that wants to control and to filter the egress traffic using an MVA, like an Azure firewall, actually those two solutions will not work. So for that reason, we have the third mode that will go to force to egress or force all the egress traffic to be routed through an Azure firewall by using a route table and inside that Azure firewall enterprises can go to filter and control and log that uh, traffic. How that works? So again here I would have my AKS node and within that AKS node I would have the operating system that needs to get updates and then maybe I would have one or more uh, pods for my application or for the system pods. And now what I want to do is that all the egress traffic that go from outside this uh, cluster, it should go to an Azure firewall. So we can enable that through the UDR mode and also by using another component that is a route table. So within a route table, we're going to create a route rule that will go to force all the egress traffic from the AKS subnet to go through the private IP address of the firewall. And here within the firewall, we can go to filter the traffic that will leave the cluster. And then that egress traffic will leave the firewall through its own public IP address. So this is again an IP that will be used for the egress traffic. And we can have one or multiple IPs, uh, public IPs for the Azure firewall. Now for the ingress traffic for the AKS cluster, if we create a service, a public service of type load balancer, what will happen is that your AKS will go to provision a new load balancer and it will provision also a public IP to manage the ingress traffic that will go into my cluster. So this is an IP for the ingress traffic. So with this way, the ingress traffic will go through the public load balancer and the egress will leave through the Azure firewall. But with this configuration, actually we need to, we need to pay attention to using the load balancer in this case, because the traffic that will go inside the cluster, because I have that route table, it will not leave through the load balancer. However, it will leave through the firewall. And because the firewall here doesn't recognize that request, so it will go to deny that traffic and it will go to drop drop that connection. So the solution for this would be to actually we, ha we would have two uh, possible solutions. Either we use the IP address of the firewall for managing the egress and also to manage the ingress traffic. It means I can go to uh, replace the IP here by this one, by the IP for the firewall. And then the egress will go through the firewall and then with the configuration to the load balancer and the IP address through DNAT rule that uh, ingress traffic will go to the IP address, public IP address of the firewall, then the public IP of the load balancer go to the pod and then when it leaves, it will leave through the firewall. And because um, that traffic have already entered through the firewall, so the firewall re will recognize that request and it will allow it to leave the cluster. A second possible solution to manage the ingress separately from outside the firewall would be to use the Azure application gateway. So with the app gateway, we would not have that issue 
because the app gateway yes would have its own uh, public uh, IP address or a private IP in case of a private uh, uh, application gateway and then the app gateway would be able to route that traffic into the AKS node and that traffic however it will not leave the uh, it will not um, ensure to the app gateway through the firewall it will not be routed through the firewall because the application gateway will be injected into the AKS a virtual network so within the virtual network the net the network traffic is considered internal network and thus it will not be routed to the firewall through that route table so that would be also the second possible solution and by the way the implementation of the AKS landing zone uses this second option for using an application gateway to manage the ingress traffic of course you can replace it by another applic by another ingress uh, uh, controller if you want to. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.